December 14th, 2014, and uh, this is Overgrowth Weekly 87. Um, so yeah, here we are again with another Q&A session. So it's going to be 30 minutes as usual. And uh, hello, my name is Lucas <coughs> Oshman. I'm Anton Riel. I'm David Rezin. So yeah, yeah. What you guys been up to? Um, work. <laughs> <laughs> yep, just working on the game still, taking care of the new little dog. How's the new little Getting dog doing? Christmas presents. Awesome. She's doing pretty well. So, Good. Good. Uh, <laughs> Maybe I should just stop asking that question every time, or every other time, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like every time, it's like, um, well, work. I guess. What if making a game? <laughs> yeah. Okay. What? So. Yeah. Shall we dive into the questions, maybe? Yeah. Well, it seems we have more than a few, so yeah. we should get yeah. going. We do. All right. So, uh, first up. We have a few questions from last week that uh, we wanted to get to this week. <laughs> last video, I should say, last Q and A, not last week. Uh, first up, we have retarded username once again, uh, who asks, "I saw some wooden spikes asset at some point in the art asset overview. Will those get some gameplay mechanic or be used just for decoration?" Well, I'd really like to use them for gameplay mechanics, though. I might get stuck on details on that and try and make like really good spike physics. <laughs> it's like you could land on them and kind of like slide down them and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, right. So we'll see. I'm sorry, Anton. Can, can you can you take this answer right now? I gotta look at my uh, sound settings because apparently. We sure, can't hear of me. course. Um, so when you uh, when you say that you're looking at um, Physics, you mean like, uh, like, like impaling physics, and the further you go down, the more the blood coagulates, and the slower you could go until you stop, like midway down or something. Or what are you thinking? <laughs> A little bit. Like, I guess you'd land on them and it would do some collision detection and add some kind of linear constraints, so different parts can only move up and down on the spike itself. Because right. a lot of games have had spikes, but I've never really seen it done super well. Yeah, it seems like once you once you hit the spikes, you typically end up in like the final pose, and there's kind of no in between, right? Yeah, and it's not it's quite gray, but um, yeah, I, I think though the the idea though that you could add some kind of hotspot mechanic to an item seems like it would be something that would work in the future, no? Yeah, and for now you can always just make a hotspot near the spikes, it just makes them die, but it just won't look very good yet. Right. Okay. Wow. Um, there's all of a sudden a lot of noise for me. <laughs> um, I don't know what just happened. That's probably me. Okay. Um, so, I mean, I think that makes sense, and uh, one, it brings up a question that I saw in the, in the forums about how to identify objects versus um items in the spawner do you ever have any plans on how to differentiate those yeah i think we might just put them in a different tab so it's easier to tell them apart just have the objects and the items tabs right that makes sense i just you know just wanted to double check because i know i saw some people complaining about it and obviously we have that mod tab that has everything laid out a little differently but even still mm. it it um you know it's it's not easy to tell the difference between uh a usable item and an object so this um, next alpha should have a pretty significant overhaul of the spawner like oh. akazi from irc is helping to make new thumbnails of all the objects that's awesome because we've uh, had a lot of objects that aren't included in the spawner at all so we want to get those in Right. Well, I know that the 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 mod that last was doing the O2 tab, you guys kind of incorporated it, um, mm -hmm. and he he was keeping it up to date for a while, but it seems like it hasn't been updated in. Oh, 
Uh, and maybe something you... You disappeared for a while, right? It's a bit easier uh, now that we have this invisible or transparent screenshot button, so you don't have to manually like mask out each object. That makes sense, for sure. Um, okay, okay. Uh, I, think, I think my sound is good now. Uh, I figured out what I did. I lowered the volume in Skype, and that lowers the volume on my computer, so I was super low. So... Uh. Yes. Where are okay. We? Where are we? I'm sorry. We, we just finished. We just question finished one. The, question one. So we can go into question two if you'd like. Great. Uh, do you want to read that too, Anton? Sure. Um, so Sprinkle 070 asks, um, will we have a more user-friendly way to load customized characters into the game and possibly remembering that we prefer custom character over two? Wow, this is a pretty. Basically, is there going to be a way to have characters with custom items and custom coloring that you can set as like your default character? Basically, character generation type stuff. Um, is there going to be an easy way to incorporate that into the game? Well, one feature that Aubrey has requested for a long time is a good way to like save outfits and save characters with their objects attached. Mm -hmm. And that's something I'm going to try and work on in this alpha. Like, this upcoming one is kind of getting to um, level editor features that seem important and have been a little bit neglected. That makes sense. Um, I've noticed that even just the spawner itself, um, probably not for you because you don't have very many items, but when we've, you know, customized the item browser... Anton? For like 200 objects, it stops rendering the images and some weird things just because there's too many items. So it'd be interesting to see a new uh, Sonner update, see how mm -hmm. that goes. Yeah. I think it'll be a pretty similar design, but I might do it in like native code instead of Osimium. And I okay. might try and add folders or something like that to help organize similar objects better. It sounds... That sounds useful, potentially, depending on the number of objects, right? It's always a pain when there's too much, so... Um, why um, do you want to make it in native code instead of Osomium? Well, it should just be a lot faster, and I can control better exactly what it's doing. Maybe do things like make texture atlases, so you can draw them all in one draw call instead of a lot of them, and things like that. Mm-hmm. Is that a thing that you have uh, that you feel in awesome in general that it's slow or is it just like not very fitting for this type of thing? I think mostly it might not be a good fit for this type of thing where it has to manage lots and lots and lots of images at the same time. Mm. Nice. So let's move to the next question, and the next question is actually from you, Anton, so you better read this one too, I guess. <laughs> sure. <clears throat> well, it was, just, it was just something I think that people would maybe like to hear, is um, what, what is still missing to make Overgrowth uh, the sort of same level as Lugaru in terms of features. Um, I know that we're still missing fire and sort of source illumination, um, the wall kick from the combat, and um, maybe using an enemy to throw them into another person. Uh, how, how much do you have left planned to get to equal with, with Lugaro? I also want to add some of the um, attacks that help prevent enemies from jumping or running away, like the tackle and the grab their legs and pull them down if they're jumping over you. Mm -hmm. And we still need a staff, like a blunt staff that's not a spear. For sure. And those in the firewall kick and kicking enemies into each other. I think those are the main <laughs> things. Right. I know that a lot of people have asked for the animal run to come back. Um, and uh, <laughs> and I don't know if... Uh, I, I know that you talked about how that might not work with the current, um, the current characters. Is that something you still are thinking about? Yeah, I want to look into the animal run, especially for some of the other creatures. Besides rabbits, like the wolves, because right. they just have longer arms, so 
so their anatomy is just more suited to it. Right. Um, I think the the rats also could work well. You know, it could even provide a an advantage if they're able to duck down and fit under something. You know, as a means of um, you know escape or something like that. So. Yeah. Um. Okay. I definitely want to look of... into that. Oh. Cool. Yeah. Cool. A lot of stuff to add in the uh, fighting department than it seems like in moves in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There, there was a thought I had when I was playing, messing around the other day about wanting to have like a, a clothesline, like a, a sort of a new scenario where if one character is <laughs> running and you're running towards them and you intentionally miss them to the side, you can like reach Just out not. and clothesline them. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. It'd be a good way to stop someone from running away as well, aside from the tackle. Yeah, I have to add <laughs> various different ways to stop people from running. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Okay, so... Um, awesome 12345 asks, how far you, are you into the story of the game? We're still thinking about different ideas for it, but... We kind of want to focus on getting all the gameplay in before really nailing down the story. So we'd like to bring back some of the characters from the comics and from the old games and have all of it tie together a little bit. So I don't have like a script for the whole game written up yet. Mm -hmm. I Makes see. sense. I think that answers that question quite well. Yep. Um, so we have Aiden Rooney 95 who asks, do you plan to add a way to have checkpoints? Maybe once you go through a trigger, you spawn in a certain place. Next time you die slash press a, press a respawn key. Yeah, that's pretty high on the priority list, but probably not for this coming alpha. Because for the parkour levels, it's very frustrating if you like make it most of the way and then fall off and have to do all of it over and over again. It would right. definitely be nice to add a checkpoint system for that. Yeah, yeah. Do you, if you were to do a checkpoint system, would you do something to save the state of every character, um, or would it be more of just your own character? I think that's been a a potential issue um, for characters in the past. Yeah, that's kind of why I haven't done it yet because it. <laughs> It can be a technical challenge depending on how deep you want to get into it. Like if you want to save the state of everything, like if there's an item in the air, is it in the same velocity and rotation and everything? Or if right. you have like blood drops falling? Or do you just want to like save the position and health of every character? Right. So that's something I'll have to figure out. Makes sense. Yeah. That's good to know then, that that's in the pipe, in the pipeline. Yes. So, next up we have Akazi, who says, Hello David, I have a question. Are you guys at the stage where you know exactly what is required to rig and or animate characters in Overgrowth? If you're at a solid foundation with all this, then can we get some developer-made tips on proper ways to set up rigs and animation for custom characters and weapons so they are ready to be exported into Overgrowth? Everyone is pretty much doing this blindly, and I would really love a tutorial of some kind. I hope I wrote this in a way that makes sense. Also, update Blender scripts to a more stable version of Blender and fix for the animation import script. <laughs> Fast to me is begging. <laughs> Longest question well, in EU. Yeah, I know it's required to rig and animate characters so far. I do want to make a couple improvements to it. Like, one of the most annoying things right now is adding morph targets for their hands, for their fist transition. So that, I might change that to be easier. But... Yeah, it would be cool to make a tutorial next time I rig a character, maybe. That'd be interesting. And and are you guys sticking with the version of Blender that you... Was it like 2.41 or something that was the one that worked? I think the scripts aren't updated for newer versions or something. Yeah, the scripts are for 2.55. But okay. I'm not sure if I want to update it because it would take a while. And that would just delay the game by however long that takes. I see. <laughs> so I don't really want to do that. I'm not sure if there would be a huge benefit for that. I that see. would merit the cost. Yeah. Um, it's worth adding also that uh, Marcus uh, on the forums made a uh, 
overgrowth character reference guide that helps people a long way in making characters for overgrowth. So if you want to do that, you should probably check that out. So I'll post that link in the chat right there. So yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, next up we have Green Flame who asks, any changes slash additions to combat mechanics or any new ways for the player to interact with the world more? Maybe things like being able to talk to enemy during or before battles. I'm still thinking about all of that. The main thing I want to add for combat is probably grappling of some kind. Being a, Especially for wolves, I was thinking their primary attack would usually just be like grabbing them and then biting on them. And there's hmm. not really any way to grab at this point. Right. And also we need disarms for weapons. True. Yeah, it's it's always hard to... I, I would say that the, the toughest things are disarms against weapons because it's so easy to get cut and not get a weapon out of it. And then also how to deal with multiple enemies at the same time. There's not... Not that it should be easy, but there's no way to, you know, specify which target you're attacking um, other than proximity. And, you know, I've noticed that if there's a dead guy on the ground, you can accidentally kick them instead of the live person running around trying to kill you, so... Um, yeah. You need to have I some can... better priority for the targeting. You need to get their priority straight. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure about talking to enemies. Like, it would be nice to have something like that, like a taunt or a anti-taunt, where it's like, oh, can we just talk this out? <laughs> but I also don't want to increase the scope of the project much further. Right. Mm -hmm. We'll have to see about that one. Uh, so Greenflame also asks, uh, are wounds going to affect characters' abilities, like disabling them from jumps or kicks? Will players need to render their wounds, or they recover behind the scene, behind the levels, like in Luguru? I probably don't want to have too much um, of wounds like carrying over from one level to another. I kind of like trying to keep them modular, so you can go back and try each level and try and do like beat your time or beat your score for those levels. So having persistent injuries could conflict with that. Yeah. Right. Though it would be cool to have scars or anything like that. More cosmetic. Could do a dog cameo. Yay. <laughs> uh oh. Here's Laika. Aww. Hello, Laika. <laughs> very cute. Yeah. New. Very cute. Possibly a Tibetan Spaniel mix. We don't really know. <laughs> anyway, she just came to say hi. Is like a going to be an overgrowth? Uh, maybe. I could make like a... <laughs> One-armed Tibetan Spaniel dog character. Yeah, <laughs> it would be cool. Um, okay, so Carol asks, uh, how likely would it be to see some launcher, some launcher integrated by default as an official solution or an official OG launcher to be made? Currently having the some launcher on the Steam version can be bothering. And he also asks, has asked several things, so I guess we maybe can lump these together into one. He asks, do you plan on using the Steam Workshop for OG mods slash maps, etc., along with the Steam Cloud? And he asks, uh, are any improvements... No, that's another one. Okay, so those two together. <laughs> so basically, like, what's ha what's the thing with some launcher and uh, Steam Workshop? Like, what, what are you going to do with that? Well, some launcher is really helpful, but... The Steam Workshop is part of the reason why I haven't integrated that as the official mod solution. Because the Steam Workshop might be more more popular with users if I ever get that working. <laughs> I know so that, that... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. So it's just kind of in limbo at this point. Which direction that will go. Mm -hmm. um, I know that Jeff and I were talking one point at making or at least discussing the option of how to make some launcher a um an official workshop tool and having it be integrated with steam somehow um i don't know i mean 
the way that we use some launcher since i'm slightly involved with that uh you know it's it's definitely very separate from the game and i think that some things about it could be in you know crossed over i think that the thing that we've done more than anything else is establish sort of guidelines for how mods need to be assembled in order to be easily plugged into the game and i think that's maybe um where it's the most useful but i don't know how true that cool. is yeah it'd also be good if i could find someone who could handle that so that because <laughs> if everything i do will just delay the game by however long i spend on it i right. have to be kind of conservative yeah with time people in the chat are requesting dog again <laughs> <laughs> well i think she has to go for a walk then <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, that's something that I'm that I quickly learned in my current school projects, or in current school projects that I go to, where it's like anything we can do to make the programmers have less work is just going to make the game that much better, because programming is the heaviest part of anything, so you want to do that as little as possible. Right. If that makes um, sense. <laughs> well. I I know that Aaron, who did all of our programming for um, some launcher, would be um, more than happy to discuss the possibilities of integrating. So, if you want to talk to him, I'm sure we can set that up. <laughs> sure, we can talk about that later, though. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> he's he's been busy with school, so that's yeah, why I'm trying not... to look into bringing more people on to hire to handle different aspects of the project so that I can just make it go faster and sort of parallelize a little bit. Right. Awesome. Um, so, so, Carol has uh, another question. He asks, are any improvements to be made on parkour and movement in general, like we're currently forced to spam jumping to, work, to walk up slopes? Yeah, that's something I'd like to l work on a bit more. So you could have like sliding down slopes and just a more controlled approach because you shouldn't have to spam jumping. You should either be able to walk up it or not, probably. So I have to look into that, especially with cats cause, and other creatures that might have different climbing abilities. Like I think cats sh should have better climbing, especially on like porous surfaces that they can get their claws into, like wood. Yeah. Makes sense. Maybe that will be for the next alpha, but not this coming one. <laughs> Great. Any other any other parkour moves that you would consider? Um, I don't know. I mean, a lot of people I've seen ask for some of the more, I would say, free running things like the the types of jumps where you jump over items and things like that. Um, I don't know if that's uh, something that makes sense in the game or not. I think it could be cool. It's something to look into, but I'm not sure yet. Okay. All right. Um, HKNGAYEN13 asks, In the future, will there be any additions of special weapons that serve functions other than combat, such as grappling hooks uh, or ninja ropes, shields, smoke bombs, or any other qua crazy non-standard weapons uh, you cats come up with? I think there will be some, though maybe not those ones. Though, <laughs> I think we'll probably have a shield at least. And it's possible that the rats might have something like a smoke bomb. That's pretty cool. So, nice. That's not nailed down yet. We still have to work <laughs> out the gameplay implications of everything. <laughs> mm -hmm. you, you look like there were some specific things you had in mind. <laughs> but but not sure so oh okay it's always tricky because every time i say things it might come across as a promise <laughs> <laughs> true true yeah if, yeah. if so, there's something i've learned with uh, with following the development of overgrowth it's that uh, everything is just like you don't have the, the definite idea of the game in your head right you're just making it quite a bit as you go along as i understand it right yeah like at some at every point in time, you're probably imagining the full game uh, in some way, but that changes as time moves along and so on. 
So people should keep that in mind that anything you say is subject to change at any point. I always have some vision of how the game will be, but that vision changes sometimes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Okay. So moving on, Zwerti uh, asks, it would be great, it would be really great if you could answer this question for me as I'm doing a research project on the subject at school. To begin with, you had quite a small following, so I'm wondering what is this? Mo what is the most effective thing an indie developer can do in order to advertise their game successfully? Can you tell us a bit about your own experience here or give us any resources to learn more? Well, my approach for Wolfire was kind of like a snowball, like you're constantly very slowly gathering up momentum just by keeping some open communication with everyone and trying to do cool things yeah and just volume of things some people take a much more targeted approach they have their their whole like marketing plan but i don't really know how to do that <laughs> <laughs> so i just do it this way so the downside is that it takes a long time like i started kind of rolling the snowball back at like idevgames.com in like 2000 so it took a long time to get to where we are now right. but there's so definitely other ways to do it that I'm not the best person to talk about <laughs> would you say that having Jeff and John doing the constant promotions for what was it two years uh, helped yeah I think Jeff and John helped a lot like, we have had an unusual structure in that half the team was actually working on day-to-day -day production, and half the team was working more on marketing and community relations. Right. So that helped a lot, I think. Do you think that, um, because Jeff did some initial programming early on for Asomium, do you feel like having him transition away from that was a useful tool, and then sort of Consequently, do you think maybe the PR got ahead of itself in terms of when when the... Because the game became popular and it's still taking a long time to develop. Do you feel like it maybe got popular too early compared to when the game actually will be released? Well, I think he kind of maxed out its popularity at the stage it was at. So there wasn't really much more for him to do. So that's part of why he and John have to do Humble Bundle. Because mm -hmm. there's just more to do there. Right. I think it wasn't really too early in terms of overgrowth. Like, it was pretty early, and maybe some people were disappointed that they're following it too long. But having it popular so early also just helped us have funding to be able to continue it via pre-orders. Right. So I, I think kind of mixed I, in that sense. Yeah, I mean that's the, that's sort of the question that I get now is that I see a lot of you know comments slash trolls from people online asking you know like finish the game, finish the game, you know, and and um, do you think that had had you guys not been as popular that they would be more forgiving of that? Um, I guess that's kind of what I was asking. I think they just wouldn't know about us. <laughs> I'd rather okay. have them be criticizing us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's I, something that I find when I talk to people, because I meet a lot of, you know, I go to game developer school, so a lot of people play games where I go, and I ask people about Overgrowth, of course, and almost, I mean, a lot of people have heard about it. They're like, oh yeah, I followed that game for like a while, like <laughs> a couple of years ago. He said, how's it going nowadays? And like, I think it's really good that they have... Uh, the game on their mind that they know who will fire are and uh, what overgrowth is in somewhere in their brains right yeah we're really lucky to have enough pre-orders to keep on just surviving <laughs> yeah awesome great uh so glon from the irc asks on a scale of, of uh, dead april to 10 how happy are you about og's current state of development in full detail well, of course, I would like it to be farther along, but I think we're making pretty good progress recently, and I'm starting to just have more organization of, like, what am I going to do for the next alpha, and what are the alphas we need to have before the game is done, and I think that's helpful. And Jill's helping with that a bit also, because 
she has more of a background in like traditional production and dealing with management and things that I never had because I've always just been working on my own crazy projects. <laughs> That's cool. How, how has the last two weeks been working with her compared to um, maybe the... Pre I think when you you first started talking about having her on the board, she had been there fairly new. Have you Have you noticed a change having more people involved over the past few weeks? Um... I think being more organized is one of the main things. Okay. And that's part of why I wanted her on board, is to just always have pressure to keep focusing on like the game, gameplay and game design, and having more structure. Because otherwise I, keep, I sometimes get distracted with random tech projects, as you may have noticed. I'm like, oh, the most important thing is to have really robust mesh simplification for distant <laughs> rabbits. And maybe that's not actually the most straightforward path from here to completion. So then, do you feel like you've been more focused the past two weeks? I think so. Like, for the next alpha, I have this plan for the improving the level editor by having it so you can save the attached objects and revamping the spawner and so on. And that's, that's the plan. I'm going to try and do that. And then we'll have the new alpha. Well, in the past, it's all more like, I'm just going to work on whatever seems most important, and once it seems like there's enough stuff, I'll make a video about it. Makes I'm just sense. trying to shift that approach around. Cool. Great, great. So I think we've been going for um, around half an hour now. Um, there's one last question that I saw in the, uh, in the chat for this stream, in the stream chat, by Slimy Yet Satisfying, who asks, is there anything else we can we pre-orders and fans can do to help Wolfire and Overgrowth? I think the main thing is just to try making your own mods and things because then I can see them and maybe get ideas for the game and other people can see them and people can make videos about them and spread the word. That's probably the most helpful thing. Also yep. send in bug reports. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and where do they send bug reports? So if you have a bug, you can send it to bugs at wolfire.com and preferably include your system specs and how to reproduce the bug. Makes sense. Nice. So before we sign off here, we should also mention that Overgrowth is currently cheap on the Humble Store. So... Uh, <laughs> If you don't have Overgrowth yet and you're just watching and you're considering getting it, you can get it right now for like... Whoa, that's a long ass link right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess it worked. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, you can get it for like 25% uh, off, I think, for uh, the coming uh, one day and 21 hours. Cool. True. So yeah, thanks everyone for watching. And uh, we will come back again in two more weeks for uh, Overgrowth Weekly 88. I guess, yeah, 88. Sweet. That's the, that's the weekend in yeah. between Christmas and New Year's, correct? Yes. Are you able at okay. that point, by the way, David? 28th? Uh, yeah, I think so. I should be I should be fine. Yep. Awesome. Cool. So don't forget to send in your questions. Uh, we have a link on ogweekly.com uh, to the forums where you can send them in. Uh, so yeah, once again, thanks for watching and we will see you in uh, two weeks. Bye. See you guys later. Bye.